and our family all across the world. Welcome to the official virtual meeting space for St. Paul AME Jacksonville. We are so excited that you are here and we truly believe that this message is going to bless your life. We want you to stay connected to the incredible things that are happening right here. So make sure that you subscribe to, like, follow our page and turn on the notifications by following the instructions below. Lastly, if you want to partner with us in relation to the amazing things that are happening at St. Paul Jacksonville and that we're doing across the state, you can follow the instructions below. God bless, we love you, and we'll see you soon. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for our mandate and our commission to change the world. We thank you, God, that you have empowered us and uniquely gifted us to transform communities and change lives. We thank you, God, that this power derives from your sacrifice on the cross and your resurrection from the tomb. In that, God, you conquered sin and death. And because you conquered sin and death, we can also overcome injustice. We can overcome poverty. We can overcome lack. We can overcome any tool the enemy has placed in our way to hinder us from being who you called us to be. We love you, God, for it. We honor you this morning. And now, God, as we come to this time of sharing in word, we know that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We come against any de demonic assignment or attack that might distract us and shift our focus from your word. We know, God, that there's life and power in your word. And we decree and declare that as your word comes forth, lives will be changed, shackles will fall, and chains will break. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn with me, my brothers and sisters, in the gospel according to John chapter 20. John chapter 20, beginning with verse 24. And as you're turning there, I want to thank these brothers who uh, are serving us as doorkeepers this morning. And I must admit, I like those colors that they are wearing. I wish Brother Sherman was here to hear me say that, Sister Jatan. I like those colors that they are wearing. John chapter 20, um, verse uh, 24, beginning with verse 24 from the New King James Version. It reads, now Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. For a few moments that are mine this morning, I want us to share on the subject, you are important to God. You are important to God. Do ministry to your neighbor. Uh, you may have a mask on, but we understand that a mask is not a muzzle. Uh, repeat after me by looking at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are important to God. Find somebody else. Say, neighbor. You are important to God. On Good Friday, uh, Superintendent Feathers 
um, preached a sermon from one of the last sayings of Jesus Christ. And the title of that message was that God is concerned about you. Since then, I have reflected on his message. And one of the things that has been revealed to me through the spirit is that oftentimes in our life, the enemy not only comes what John 10 and 10 says to steal, kill and destroy. But one of the ways I realized that the enemy comes to do that is to convince you that you are not important to God and that God is not concerned about you. Sometimes when we face challenges in life, particularly when we are spiritually developing, when we are immature in our faith, when we have some growth areas in our faith, watch this, we will convince the challenges and the problems in our life as a sign that God does not care about us or that we're not important to God. Sometimes in life, we confuse human power with importance to God. We think the more your name is called in church, we think the more leadership someone has in church, we think the more power somebody has, it signifies that God cares about them more than he cares about me. But I stopped by this morning to remind you that you are important to God. Because if you were not important to God, you would not be here. Do ministry to your neighbor one more time and tell your neighbor you are important to God. I don't care what the enemy says to you while before you go to bed. I don't care what your first thought is when you wake up in the morning. I don't care what your checkbook looks like. I don't care where you slept last night. I don't care if you slept in a homeless shelter last night. I don't care if you did not have food last night. It does not minimize the fact that all of us in this room and all of us watching online are important to God. And because we are important Important to God, God has a plan for our life. Can I tell you, we may not be able to figure out the plan. We may not be able to understand the plan. We may think we are in the wilderness and the valley, but I thank God that even in the wilderness and in the valley, that's still a part of God's plan for our life. Why? Because we are important to God. I realized the importance we are, how important we are to God when I read our story uh, in John chapter 24. What was interesting, John chapter 20, excuse me, what's interesting about this is that Jesus is raised from the dead at this point. And now Jesus is going about showing himself that people might believe that he is who he said he is. And the Bible declares that he showed up in the midst of the disciples. But what's interesting is there was one person who was not there. You know his name, Doubting Thomas. We call him Doubting Thomas. Now, you must remember, Thomas was one of the disciples. He saw Jesus work miracles. He saw Jesus feed the 5,000. He saw Jesus lay uh, hands on the blind, and the blind were able to recover their sight. He saw the woman with the issue of blood and how her issue dried up when she touched the hem of Jesus garment but yet after spending so much time with Jesus he still did not believe that Jesus was who Jesus said he was and the Bible declares that eight days later Thomas shows up with the disciples and the disciples tell him Jesus is alive we've seen him and the Bible declares that Thomas said unless I can stick my finger through his wounds I will not believe it is precisely at this time that the Bible declares in John chapter 20 that the doors were shut, but yet Jesus still shows up in the midst of them. What I want to remind you today is that you are important to God. You are so important to God that even when you try to slip away from God, the presence of God still shows up. 
the Bible declares that the doors were shut. Jesus did not even bother opening the door. Jesus just showed up in the midst of them. And I'm so glad that I'm so important to God. Even when I try to slip away from God, the presence of God always finds me. For how many of us know where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. When I read this, I thought about the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who found themselves in the midst of a fiery furnace. And even in the midst of what was designed to kill them, the presence of the Lord still showed up. Can I tell you, you are so important to God that even at your lowest point, even in your hospital room, even making plans for a loved one at the funeral home, the presence of the Lord still shows up how many of us know that when the presence of God shows up things begin to shift and things begin to happen in your life I am so glad that despite my sinful ways despite my disobedience ways God still loves me enough to bless me with his presence some of you sitting in this room before you go places you call people to make sure you know who's going show up because you don't want to show up or bless somebody with your presence if your enemy is there but God is so good to us uh, that even when we curse God's name uh, he still shows up for us uh, God is so good to us uh, that even when we turn our back on God uh, the presence of the Lord still shows up uh, you ought to high five your neighbor and tell your neighbor you're important uh, you're important enough because the presence of the Lord is still showing up in your house on your job in your classroom in your church on your street that is why you're still here today because the presence of the Lord has shown up. Tap your neighbor one more time and say, neighbor, I thank God for the presence. I'm not thanking God this morning for who I am, but I thank God this morning for the presence of the Lord. Is there anybody in the house who just wants God's presence to engulf you? You want God's presence to fall on you because when God's presence comes, chains begin to break. He was so important that God showed up even in the midst of their unbelief. God still showed up. But what I love about this text is that when Jesus shows up, uh, Thomas was so important to him that Jesus said, watch this. Uh, I, I want you to look at my, uh, take your finger and, and place it here. Look at my hands uh, and reach your hands here. Put it into my side. Uh, in other words, I don't want you to be unbelieving, but I want you to be believing. Watch this. I, I struggle with this, uh, Minister Marlow, because I said to myself, the Savior has died and resurrected. You would think that he would resurrect whole. You would think that when Jesus got up from the tomb with all power in his hand, that he would not have any marks on his body. He would not have any wounds on his body. And it was revealed to me through the spirit that we are so important to God uh, that Jesus would rather stay in a wounded place uh, to prove himself than to be made whole. I wish I had somebody in the house. Jesus said, I love them enough that not only am I going to bless them with my presence, uh, but I'm also going to prove myself. Lord, have mercy. It is the hymn that says he proves himself or and or. Uh, it is what I realized is that God oftentimes will move into a state with us where God has to prove himself because he knows we are so bullheaded that we would not believe him unless he proved himself. It is God we're talking about. God who had a conversation with Job in Job uh, chapter 38 when, when he was proving himself to Job when Job was in a quandary. It was God who said where were you uh, when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding who determined its measurements. Can I keep going? Surely you know or who stretched the line upon it 
to what were its foundations fastened or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. This is him asking Job a question or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb when I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band. In other words, Job, who are you to question me? But because you're questioning me, let me prove myself. Uh, can I tell you we're here this morning because God proves himself every day uh, when he wakes us up in the morning and starts us on our way. Uh, Jesus, when Jesus resurrected Lazarus, Jesus, the Bible declares that they took away the stone from the place where Lazarus was laying and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me and I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, uh, that they may believe that you sent me. In other words, God goes out of his way uh, just to prove how great he is to us. Uh, and God is saying in this season, you are important enough to me uh, that I will prove myself to you just so that you may believe. Uh, somebody is in the house right now. You've been waiting on God to do something in your life and God has given you sign after sign uh, time after time but you're still waiting uh, because you need more evidence and you need more proof uh, can I tell you God's coming for you uh, God's getting ready to reveal God's resume uh, is there anybody in the house who understands uh, that God has a resume uh, and God's resume has healing on that resume uh, God's resume has deliverance on that resume uh, God's resume has creation on it uh, and I thank God that every day uh, God proves himself to me uh, he proves how great he is uh, he proves how miraculous he is uh, and if anybody don't know who God is uh, I double dog dare you to walk outside uh, and lift your head up and look towards the sun uh, and when you look at sun, the sun that's God's proof uh, that God is real uh, I double dog dare you to walk outside uh, and feel the breeze run across your face uh, if you want to know God is real uh, that's some proof for you uh, is there anybody that's willing to lift up your hands uh, and you look at your hands uh, and realize that you still have activity of your limbs uh, thank God for the proof thank God for the proof God cares about us so much that God not only blesses us with his presence, God not only blesses us with proof, but the Bible declares in verse 31, these things that were written that you may believe, proof that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God. And watch this, that believing you may have life in his name. You may have life in his name. Not only does God care about us enough to bless us with his presence. Not only does God care about us enough to bless us with proof. But as I go to my seat, he cares about us enough to bless us with prosperity. Now watch this. The Bible declares that you may have life in his name. And when I first read this thing, I thought they were talking about eternal life. But I realized when I went back to John 10 and 10 that says the thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. And the Bible declares, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Can I tell you Jesus cares about you enough that he not only blessed you with eternal life, but he's trying to also upgrade your quality of life. I, I wish somebody in the house would understand that Jesus did not design you to be broke, busted, and disgusted. Jesus Jesus did not design you to live beneath a certain standard. Uh, Jesus did not design you to be depressed. Uh, Jesus did not design you to be the tail. Uh, Jesus did not design you to be the borrower, but Jesus designed you to have more life. Uh, you ought to look at your neighbor and help me do ministry to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I speak more life over you. I speak more abundance over you. I speak more prosperity over you. I speak peace over your life. I speak strength over your life. I speak breakthrough power 
over your life. Is there anybody in the house that can declare this morning, when I leave this place, I'm leaving this place with a little bit more life. I'm leaving this place with a little bit more strength. I'm leaving this place with a little bit more joy. I'm leaving this place stronger, better, wiser. Why? Because God loved me enough to give me more life. Tap your neighbor one more time and tell your neighbor, neighbor go to the book of Joel. And in the book of Joel, the Bible declares that all the years that the locusts have devoured, all the years that the canker worm has destroyed, God's going to restore it. Why? Because he's giving me more life. Somebody shout more life. More life. More life. More life. More life. More life. That I may worship you. More life. That I may give you the praise. More life. And guess what? Because I'm important to God. That means everything connected to me is important to God. Therefore, not only am I going to get more life, but my children are going to have more life. Not only are my children going to have more life, but my grandchildren are going to have more life. Somebody shout yes. Not only are my family going to have more life, but my finances are going to have more life. Not only is my finances going to have more life, but thank God my faith is having more life. Shout yes. If you want more, why don't you lift up your voice and say, Lord, give me more life. Give me more life until I look like you. Give me more life until I talk like you. Give me more life until I walk like you. Give me more life until I look like you. Somebody ought to shout, give me more. I want more and I'm not gonna wait until I die to get it. But is there anybody in the house that knows he'll give you more on this side? Somebody ought to reach up and grab it. Anybody need more peace? Reach up and grab it. Anybody need more joy? Reach up and grab it. Somebody ought to say more. More, more. what he gives us. He still puts us in position to have more. Because we're so important to him. And watch this. Some of you right now, some of us right now are upset right now over what we lost. 
And we're so upset about what we lost that we can't even see what God is trying to give us. But you are so important to God that even when you lose years, incarceration, God will add on years to the back of your life. Even when you've lost because of financial calamity, God will, God will take that and flip it around. Somebody in the room then went from a 600 credit score to an 850 credit score. Because when God is in it, there's no limit to what God can do. What does that have to do with the text? Thomas doubted God. Said he gonna have to come show himself. And not only did he show himself, he restored Thomas back to the place of the others. And that's what God wants to do to you this morning. He wants to restore you back to the place that he has for you. Why? Because you are important to him. Everybody in this room, I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you've experienced. You are important to God. If our young people don't get anything else, I hope they get this morning that you are important to God. I've been there. I've been, I've been bullied in school. I've been bullied as an adult. Been intimidated. Been made to feel insignificant. Been lied on been talked about but it does not change that I'm important to God and can I tell you the quicker you learn this is another sermon I'm in the quicker you learn that you are important to God the more what others say and do becomes less important an adult needed to hear that this morning. Amen. Amen. The doors of the church are open this morning. Because you are so important to God, Jesus went to the cross to die for you. Because you are so important to him, watch this. Had you been the only sinner in the world, Jesus still would have died for you. We don't want that sacrifice to go in vain. We want to do something right now for those of you who are watching online, for those of you in the sanctuary. We want to offer Christ to you today. There was a theologian who talks about, Augustine, who talks about, I believe, and I have to go back to my seminary days, who talks about Imago Dei, the image of God that all of us are created with the image of God. I don't come this morning to give you Christ. I come this morning to help you discover the Christ that is already in you. If you're watching this morning, if you're here this morning, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Maybe you don't know whether or not you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Because God, because you're so important to God, he woke you up this morning to give you an opportunity to accept him today. And I want to encourage you today in the sanctuary and watching, come to Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, he'll make your life brand new. He'll pick you up, turn you around, and although you may continue to struggle, you have a savior who's there to extend you grace mercy and love if you're here this morning and you're not saved or you don't know if you're saved why don't you come come to the altar we're not going to lay hands on you we just want to pray for you to help you discover the Christ that is in you for those that are watching online or maybe you're in the sanctuary and you're a bit nervous you may be intimidated about walking down I don't care how you get him I just want you to get him <laughs> 